This is the resume that got me over 10 big tech software engineering interviews at companies like TikTok, Uber, and Amazon, and so much more. And no, I'm not going to gatekeep the resume from you. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three essential rules that I followed to make sure I built the perfect software engineering resume. And the best part is, as you're about to see on this entire resume, I do not have any crazy big tech experience that's carrying me. So it's actually the resume template that's getting me these interviews. Let's just jump straight into it. Rule number one, do not follow sample resumes you find online, please. I'm talking about the ones with a bunch of different colors or weird margins and stuff like that. That's designed to attract your interest so you buy their course or visit their website. It's not built for recruiters. In fact, this very common resume template will actually hurt your chances of getting hired and let me show you why. You first need to pass an AI parsing through your resume to determine if you're a good fit for the role. So for this reason, we need to be building an ATS friendly resume and this stands for Applicant Tracking System. To put it simply, you need to make it so that your resume is able to be read and thoroughly understood by this AI and that's something that those templates online are not doing. So to help you out, I made a completely free ATS friendly resume template you can find in the description of this video. All I ask is that you subscribe in return. Now speaking of templates, rule number two is follow this template if you want to get hired. Please, please do not make this very common mistake. Especially in software engineering, people spend hours and hours and hours learning how to code, building out coding projects only to spend an hour on their resume and then wonder why they're not getting hired. To land a job in today's brutally competitive market, you need to be perfecting your resume, so make sure you're using this template. Okay, so moving on to my resume, the first thing I have is a header. This includes my contact information, which includes my email, my LinkedIn, and my phone number. But most importantly, for a software engineering role, it includes my GitHub and my coding portfolio. This is included at the top for a reason, because if recruiters think you're a good fit for a role, they're going to start by checking out your GitHub and your previous coding projects. On GitHub, there's a feature that not only shows how often you're coding in a year, but also shows the coding languages that you're most frequently using. So that way a recruiter could see if you actually fit with the needs required in the role. For example, for me, I applied to a backend engineering intern role and that required some experience with Spring Boot. So when a recruiter went to my GitHub and saw that I built multiple coding projects with Spring Boot, they knew immediately that I was a good fit for the role. It's pretty self-explanatory when you think about it. Now, the coding portfolio is arguably as essential as your resume if you're a software engineer. And I know this is true because I've actually had over 300 recruiters visit my portfolio over the last three or four years that I've been applying to internships. Never mind the fact that a coding portfolio is a great way to show off your own skills and previous experiences, but it's a collection of every single coding project you've actually built in a way that's visible for a recruiter. If you've hosted your coding projects, for example, like I have, you could then go ahead and click on each one individually, and I believe this is so impressive to a recruiter. Next on my resume is my education experience where I started by listing off the school that I attended and this is McGill for me. I mentioned that I majored in computer engineering with a minor in AI and I also put my expected graduation date of May 2026. Now since I have a high GPA, I also brought attention to that by bolding it, but no matter what anybody tries to tell you, your GPA actually does not matter. From all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs that I've applied to, I could count on my hand how many times I've been asked to submit my transcript to verify my grades. Most of the time, it's just to prove that I'm actually enrolled in a university and I'm going to graduate when I say I'm going to. So if your GPA is not that good, just do not bring attention to it and do not include it. I would honestly recommend focusing more on coding projects and grinding lead code if you want to actually land that software engineering job. Now the last little bit is listing out all the relevant coursework and this is more to try to trick that ATS system by hitting more of the buzzwords. Now the most important part of my resume is the work experience. For each role, I start by mentioning the company and then my position, for example, back in engineering intern and then the location and the time that I did this. Under each job, I like to list three bullet points which outline my most key achievements. A common mistake is not following the accomplished X through Y using Z method. For example, one of my bullet points is design 30 plus AWS Lambda functions, which is my X, 
strategically leveraging Lambda layers to increase processing speed by 35% and reusability by 52%, which is my Y. And finally, my Z is resulting in cost savings of $1,000 per large scale deployment. Now, this could either sound crazy impressive to you, or you might think it's a bit of BS. And that's actually my next point. In these bullet points, make sure you are exaggerating as much as possible your impact on the company. Keep in mind that the majority of the time, the HR person that's reading through your resume is not well versed in software engineering. So in fact, you should be talking more about the business impact that you have. For example, talk about how much time you save or how much money you save. Every single time you mention some business impact, also make sure you're quantifying that result. Like if I just said this resulted in cost savings, that would sound a lot less impressive than resulted in cost savings of $1,000 per large scale deployment. Now I'm not saying to lie with these numbers, but stretch the truth a little bit and make sure in interviews you can back up everything on your resume with actual sound logic. Remember, these data points are what's selling yourself to a recruiter. Never, ever, ever sell yourself short. Now this next section is actually something that I've recently added to my resume and I've seen so much success from it. Including a leadership section is a great way to show you're more than just a code monkey. It highlights your ability to lead and make meaningful impact. And this is something that recruiters at Google at Microsoft have personally told me is what they're looking for on a resume. For me, I've seen a lot of success through creating my own startup and obviously through my own social media because this is something that not a lot of people have on their resume. But it doesn't have to be this in depth. Say you did a hackathon and you won and you were the lead of the team. That's a great thing to put on your resume. Now onto the coding projects, which is the most crucial part of your resume if you have minimal to no experience. But first, let's jump into the sponsor of today's video, Scrimba. If you're trying to learn how to code but don't know where to start, Scrimba is honestly one of the best ways to do it. It's totally free to jump in, you get access to interactive lessons where you're not just watching videos. The cool part is they've got literally everything from JavaScript, TypeScript, React, Python, you name it. And yeah, it's free to do. But if you want to level up with things like certificates that actually help you land jobs, you could pay for those or grab direct roadmaps to fast track your learning. My favorite part is it's not just theory. You're going to be learning through something called project based learning. You're going to be building projects as you go. So by the time you're done, you've got real stuff to show in your portfolio, which I already mentioned is crucial to land that job. Plus, the community is honestly super helpful, so you're never going to get stuck in that tutorial hell. So I highly recommend you guys check it out today. It's completely free. And if you want to go further with those roadmaps and certificates, I highly recommend you check out the link in my description for a discount. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Okay, so for each coding project, where possible, you want to have the name, a link to a deployed website, as well as the source code, and then bold the tech stack you use to build it. For example, my McGill scheduler, which was used by over a thousand people, links directly to not only this website that's hosted online for anybody to see, but also my source code. If you have minimal experience or you're struggling to find a job, I highly recommend you build two or three good quality coding projects. Now, I do not mean your typical tic-tac-toe app or even a to-do list. If hundreds of thousands of people have this on your resume, how are you going to stand out and what's going to make you a good enough candidate to get hired? I don't mean to be brutally honest, but it's the truth. Try to build something unique that's personal to you that you could talk about in interviews. For example, I love the Premier League and soccer, so I've built an AI Premier League match predictor. Not only is an AI project great in this tech market, but whenever a recruiter is also a Premier League fan, it's such a great talking point on a human level. Now, finally, the last part of my resume was my technical skills. I just listed out all of my technical skills at the bottom of my resume, and there's some debate whether you should do this at the bottom or at the top. And I know, for example, Amazon recruiters prefer at the bottom, but Google recommends putting it at the top. It doesn't really matter that much because the majority of this purpose is just a recruiter could see everything that you're well versed in. And honestly, so the ATS system can pick up all of the keywords that you have. I highly recommend breaking it up into three different subjects, though. Start with your languages like Java and Python. And please do not put master in Java because that means nothing. Next, list out your developer tools. For example, AWS is my first one because this is one of the most sought after in the job market. Finally, put all your libraries and frameworks. So I put Spring Boot, React.js, Next.js, all that kind of stuff. Now that we're done the resume, that brings me to rule number three, which is mass apply. To give you guys some context, last year I applied to over 350 software engineering internships to get four job offers. 
anybody that tells you quality over quantity is probably not well versed in this job market unfortunately. For this reason, I highly recommend you're applying to at least 5 jobs every single day. And what I personally do is check out this GitHub repository by Simplify which has all of the new internship postings as they come out and there's also this one for new grad rules. I also just want to emphasize that all it takes is one yes and all of those rejections don't matter anymore. Somebody will take a chance on you, I promise you. Keep on applying. If you need any tailored help, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer every single one of your questions. Anyways, that's all for today's video. I guarantee you, if you're using this resume template and you're following these three rules, you will significantly increase your chances of landing that software engineering job. If you found any of this helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.